consider a taco to be a sandwich? We're not talking about this. Well, We're not talking about this. Hold, hold, we are not talking about this. Hold, hold on, hold on. Hear me out before you get all defensive about it. The reason I bring this up is because Taco Bell has a new item coming out on September 2nd, and they're calling it the Crispy Chicken Sandwich Taco. Great. I'm happy for them. We're not talking about this. I, I, just, I think that's completely absurd calling it both a sandwich and a taco. All right. Cool. It looks freaking delicious, though. I just don't know how it's going to compare to, like, you know... Those delicious Popeyes boys. I can't imagine it's going to compare, but it'll be, it'll be, I mean, it's going to be good. It's Taco Bell. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm for sure going to try it. But it's not going to be Popeyes chicken sandwich good. They're known for chicken. Right. Taco Bell's more or less known for beef. Yeah. And the things that go inside. The, the, when you really think about it, Taco Bell foods are just like the same ingredients mixed together in different ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know how they do it. They're freaking genius. Right. Yeah. They have like five ingredients, but they somehow have like 12 different items and they all like. They're all great. They're all great. And they're all different. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, mm, nah, I'm not in the mood for that. I'm going to get the other item. That's the exact, the exact same thing <laughs> in a different configuration. Yeah. <laughs> right totally they got some freaking geniuses in their uh like like r&d department yeah definitely oh what's going on with you man no i'm kind of just curious about what this flashlight is going on about okay so um I'll, I'll, I'll circle i'll circle to that in a second okay um i hope you sanitize that before you put it on my t- dining table i did uh, you know what actually i'll lead with that um so i was at i was at my dad's over the weekend this is this getting worse already <laughs> yeah 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 and um i was poking around <laughs> i was poking worst around. way to start a flashlight story <laughs> <laughs> i was uh i was poking around in the basement and uh this is something that i i was hoping i'd be able to find and it it didn't take me very long to find it actually so i'm glad um this really won't translate to the podcast in terms of like obviously not a visual but i found my childhood pogs <laughs> and we had talked about that um so yeah i just kind of wanted to give you a little preview uh if and when we ever do that uh that overnight sleepover podcast we'll uh we'll have to do a video and uh and show everybody yeah bro yeah so um you got a little archer elf man yeah, that's no, that's what's called a slammer. Slammer, I hardly know her. Oh, but that, one actually, that one actually works. I'm like most of the ones I say. <laughs> yeah, they're usually just absurd. My my favorite thing is um whenever I say that on stream, I like usually Scorpion or somebody will say like I can't believe I found that funny, and it's it's like that's because it will always circle back around to being funny again. Yeah, like, inevitably. Yeah, it's really not that. It's really not funny, but it's like so not funny that it's funny. What's funny is how persistent about it I am. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Mac. These are th- this this in my hand would be a pog. Yeah. L- little cardboard disc picture on one side. Um. And we got. We got a little 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 pog mat. You'd set them down, and you'd take one of these slammers. And you'd this is not going to translate well over audio. No, Do no, not no, actually no. slam it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Um, but you you'd slam it down, and then you'd you'd try and like flip some of them over, and then you'd keep those, and you'd restack whatever's left. I think you restacked them. I don't. God, it's been twenty years since I played this. And then the other person takes their turn, and then the winner is whoever flips over the most i see yeah that was a thing i learned recently about um a, a a a japanese game of somewhat similar rule set but somehow more primitive uh, okay <laughs> so more, more primitive than that yeah so um let me put this in context i read this manga called golden kamui which is a really good underrated manga that i might make a video about at some point but um the the manga takes place around late 1800s japan okay um, and tries to be very historically accurate specifically takes place in hokkaido um which is the northern island of japan for anyone who doesn't know mm-hmm. and uh, uh something i've learned about japan during that time period is that that portion of hokkaido was kind of like the wild west of the united states but with snow everywhere okay um, uh, uh there was a big gold rush around that time um 
people running around with guns. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there was a native people called the Ainu people who are getting slowly pushed out of their land. Like very similar circumstances. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, uh, they had this game and I don't totally understand. I don't know what the name of this game was or I don't and I don't totally understand the rule set, but they had these like big discs. They were probably about the size of a coaster, not on like whatever this mat piece is called. Uh huh. Um, and they they had for some reason they chose like a uh, 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 famous people within the Japanese military to like put their faces on these little discs. OK. And and so you'd like lay a bunch of them like face down and you just you'd take like your your guy and you'd slam it on the table as hard <laughs> as you could and try to get them to flip over. It, so it's literally the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, but you, t- you take out the middleman of, of like the coin and instead you're just slamming the card itself down as hard as you can. Oh, OK. It, it, like, it'd be like taking whatever they'd like be taking the pog itself. OK, except it's about the size of a coaster and you're just smacking it onto the table. OK, nice. Yeah. Wow. I didn't. I didn't think you'd get any more primitive than yeah. Uh, right. Than pause, but, <laughs> but yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, you really weren't kidding. No. Yeah. It was just a, a monkey game. Just a bunch of monkeys tossing stuff around. Nice. Like you do. Nice. Um, Mac, we have another another Schrodinger situation on our hands. Oh yeah. Um, I'm gonna call this Schrodinger's listeners. So, you know, every week I uh. I'll, I'll do like a social media post for uh, when a new episode comes out. Uh-huh. And um, my dad is not on social media in any form, which is fine. His sisters, however, are both on social media. All right. And I know they, they definitely like view um, any sort of like Facebook story or Instagram story, anything like that. Um, and my dad and his sisters are both retired. All well, all three of them are retired and they all talk to each other all day in like group text. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I had to have imagined at some point they've, they've talked about this or discussed some sort of podcast. Oh, they must have, but none of them have said anything to me about it. And I was sitting there yesterday and I I got like a Facebook notification that one of my aunts liked uh, the Facebook story for, for yesterday's episode. And I was like, okay, all right, whatever. I think she's done it before. Um, And she lives in Iowa and I, I, I've looked before and we have at least had a listen in Iowa, but there's not enough for it to tell me what city it is. Well, of course that's a bit much. Uh, well, I think that's actually the only state where it doesn't give me, give me a city. It just says there's not enough data for that. Maybe because Iowa has nothing going on. <laughs> yeah. There's like four people there. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, I don't know, maybe half hour or an hour later, I'm, I'm, you know, looking to see, looking at our listens and, there's a listen from the town that my dad lives in and still nobody has said anything to me. I, uh, my dad and I were texting last night, so he may be listening to this right now, but he hasn't said anything to me and I'm not going to bring it up to him. This is going to be a Schrodinger situation. Oh, oh, yeah, if any of my shorts are listening, I want to encourage you not to bring this up. <laughs> I like it. We'll just let this go on for as long as humanly possible. Absolutely. I like it. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of assume that, um, you know, cause I had sent my dad, uh, the links to whenever we've done a video and he's reasonably tech savvy enough to, uh, probably look at, look at the other, other postings on the channel. Um, but has not said anything to me. So I kind of assumed he just listened and was like, Nah, this is not my thing. I'm not even going to bring this up. I feel like he may have seen you deep throat a hot dog and decided this is not something I want to talk about with my son. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, it was kind of the same thing like you had said uh, early on. Like, you know, you didn't know if you necessarily wanted your mom listening to it because like we we, we got some some less than less than wholesome topics sometimes. Yeah. Um, But I mean, I'm 36. Like it. 
who who really fucking cares? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, Mac is encouraging my relatives to not say anything to me. Please don't. I'm not blatantly telling you to go out of your way and say something to me. Just if you feel like it, go for it. If not, the mystery will just continue forever. I like it. I, I, I like a little bit of mystery. Um, yeah, so that's that was that was kind of that. Nice. Yeah. Um, what do you got going on, on with uh, your week? Oh, not much. Um, I just did my grocery shopping. I saw New York strips were on sale, so I picked one up. Oh, hell yeah. I think I'm going to marinate this one in some teriyaki sauce and Ooh. fry it up like that. Nice. Teriyaki steak is fucking great. Nice. Um, so, uh, I, I, I did an entire playthrough of Dark Souls since like mid last week. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So... I had, you know, you know, I, I, I always, I, I slightly hate talking about like video ideas that I have on the podcast. Cause like, you know, it, there's always the slightest chance that like an idea will never come to fruition. Right. Yeah. But you know, and especially with this one, this is such a far out idea that like, it's, it's, it's very, it seems likely it could ne- never come to fruition, but at the same time, I'm really interested in this idea. So we'll see. Um, Throughout the course of of doing my Dark Souls playthroughs on stream, are you watching something with sound on your phone right now? No, no. There's like a dog running around outside. Okay, so from my perspective, I just saw you like bring up your phone, and then I heard like I thought like children laughing or something. <laughs> I mean, there there might be kids out there, so that's why I thought that. Gotcha. No, no, I'm not. I I was just just looking at uh at, at some podcast notes, but there's definitely a dog. Okay. There might be some children out there somewhere, but um. Anyway, throughout the process of doing this this series, where I'm playing through all the, all the from software games, like I talked about on a previous podcast, like I've thought about a lot of like the differences between them, and kind of thought about like, oh, wouldn't it be interesting if I made a video talking about the differences between them and my thoughts on them, and like what my experience has been with them. The only problem is like because of like how I live stream. Uh, the only footage that I would have available for a video like that would be live stream footage, which which would have my webcam on it Mm -hmm. Um, as well as like, if I wanted to use, if I wanted to use that footage, I'd want to have the audio playing to some degree, just very quietly. And that would have my voice. Yeah. Um, So I kind of, I kind of just decided like, you know what? I'm already kind of interested in doing another dark souls playthrough. I did another dark souls three playthrough while I was in the middle of this thing. So, you know, what? I'll do a dark souls playthrough, record all the footage. And then, and then if this, if this video ever comes to fruition, I will have this footage available. Uh, uh-huh. um, and, uh, I ended up getting really into it and having a lot of fun. So I just like over like the, since like Wednesday we're talking or Thursday, I don't know when I started, I literally blasted through like 20 hours of the game and I'm, I'm up against the final boss right now. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so I have that footage available now. And so, you know, as I finish every other game, I think I'll follow it up and try to get footage of that. Assuming this idea stays alive in my mind and I don't just, you know, retire it, so to speak. Cause you know, like if, if this video ever, ever comes to fruition, it's going to be after I've played through all these games. It's not something that I can do right away. Cause I haven't played most of these games yet. Right. Yeah. So, you know, a, a lot of it is going to depend on whether or not the video still seems interesting to me. Like, six months from now, however long it takes me to get through all of them. Sure. But uh, I can say for certain, the only game I will not have non-stream footage for will be Dark Souls 2. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will not reinstall that game. <laughs> that That's the one that you talked like at nauseum about how horrible it is, right? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, I, I, un- I don't remember if I mentioned, but like on the last live stream of Dark Souls 2, I uninstalled it on stream <laughs> <laughs> and made a vow to never play it again. So... <laughs> Oof. Oh, it was just so not fun. And if I make this video, I'll have plenty of time to talk about why. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. But, um, so you remember God, this was, I don't know, three weeks or a month ago. Um, uh, my power went out for a couple days. Yep. Um, well, ever since I would say at least probably twice a week, I keep getting an email from DTE energy saying like hey we we would like your feedback please take this survey and i'm like about 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 the the power outage yeah and i'm like fuck them because they're like we're gonna use this to improve everything and i was like "Mm, i'm not gonna take my time out of this like like you guys took a long ass time to get my power back on 
So I was like, you know, maybe if they offered some sort of like, hey, we'll give you like a credit off of your bill or something, then I might be willing to actually take the time and complete this survey. Sure. Understandable. I'd be right there with you. I'm way too lazy to do surveys. So I got I got an email from them yesterday that was like, take this survey and get get an e-gift card. And I was like, OK, I'll check this out. Get a chance at an e-gift card. Oh, no, no. You would definitely get an e-gift card. But I will read you exactly word for word what it said in the email. It said. As a thank you for completing this survey, you will receive a one dollar Amazon e-gift card. Wow. And I, it, I'm really feeling the love. It, it, it gets better. It says the gift card will be emailed to you within four to six weeks of completing the survey. Jesus. Like that's not that's not even worth it. That's not worth it at all. Well, how much do you how how little do you value my time? Right. Like one, you should, you should one. Just give me a credit of some. Give me 10 bucks off my bill and I'd be happy with that. Or even a ten dollar gift card. But one, it's only a single dollar and it's an e gift card. Why does it take four to six weeks to get it to me? Literally, the second I complete that, I should just have a code in my email. That's absurd. Yeah. So. I thought I thought you'd you'd like the absurdity of that. Oh, it's so goofy. Oh my god. They they just they just put it as they just put it in the subject line, you know, to get you to click. Right. And then and if you don't read, which a lot of people won't, then you just get goofed on later. Uh yeah. So maybe maybe if I just keep ignoring it, they'll keep upping the offer like the like, <laughs> like the, the in- like the dick pill people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah so maybe i'll do it maybe i'll get an email in like a week that's like hey do this survey and then it'll be like two dollars so nice yeah we'll see but yeah that that's that's how they're trying to screw me over now offering me a month to a month and a half and half from now they'll give me a dollar yeah not worth it not re- no not at all no not at all um I did a card opening stream for the first time in a little bit. Oh, nice. What'd you open? Actually, it wasn't that long. It was only like three weeks. Um, I, we got to like put these po- I, I'm such a fidgeter. These are way too distracting. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to put them away. I didn't, I didn't want the sound to be like an issue of them like falling. <laughs> okay. In, into the tube. Like, okay. So for everyone's reference, like literally like Mike just like left this pog stuff out and I don't, I don't blame him. That's not a big deal. The problem is I am ridiculously fidgety, which is not good for audio podcasts. Like if you hear me like, <laughs> tapping the microphone playing with the, the, the pole if I'm playing with wires anything like that like I don't Mike probably doesn't realize that this is why I do this but I have a flash drive that I put all of our episodes on I always put it behind my laptop so it's not in my line of sight because then I won't be tempted to pick it up and play with it is it the same thing with the little velcro oh yes <laughs> oh yes I I am so bad at I'm so bad with fidgeting I need things to actively be out of my space for me to not touch them that's so funny um so uh the uh the microphones are they're corded and um there's a little velcro strap to to tie up the cords when when the microphones aren't plugged in and every week mac has them on my side of the table behind <laughs> behind his laptop yep. and i've noticed that for all what this is 33 all yeah. 33 episodes they've been right behind the laptop and i've i've noticed it but I've never questioned why. Yeah. So that's why I put stuff back there so I don't see it and start touching it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and and like while we were sitting here, I know you noticed like I was playing with the mat. I started touching like the coins. Oh, like yeah. The pogs like I can't. My hands are just like I got to touch something. Yeah. I got which you. Is not great in the workplace, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it happens. You know, can't go smacking bread dough everywhere. Every time you want to. <laughs> Although that's kind of fun. It is very fun. Yeah. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, opening cards, uh, uh, I opened this set of magic cards. The set was called modern horizons Two. very weird name. Um, sometimes the name has something to do with what's actually in the set. Like Kaldheim was based on Norse mythology. So I had like a Norse name, uh, but I don't know what modern horizons two means. It was also, as you can tell by the two, a follow up to another set. The, the set 
seemed to have a lot of cards that were pretty good because it was more expensive than other sets. Mm-hmm. The booster packs were about twice the cost as regu- uh, of regular cards. So I got I pulled a lot of good stuff, but for some reason, the set had a weird fascination with squirrels. <laughs> Okay, like the front, the, the booster packs had like a, an illustration of, of squirrels on it, like several squirrels, one of them looking like an enchanted magic squirrel. And I didn't really question it. I was just like, okay, that's their poster boy for this set. But as I was opening these booster packs, like consistently, like nearly every set, there was at least one card with a squirrel on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was weird, but we had a running joke that I was going to make a squirrel deck after after the stream all right it could be a thing it absolutely could nice that's i mean that's that's a thing with magic like people make decks based around a certain type of creature like there's zombie decks there's goblin decks you could absolutely make a squirrel deck probably might be hard to to rustle up enough cards but um i'm not gonna lie it just keeps it sounds like you keep saying squirrel dick nope yeah fair enough do you want to know a, a, a fun fact about Yu-Gi-Oh term- tournaments? Absolutely. So I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh much um, okay. personally. Uh, uh, um, you play it professionally. I've, <laughs> I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. I, don't, I don't understand it. It's weird. Okay. But in pretty much every one of these trading card games, there's a rule that if you run out of cards, like you lose. Um, okay. So it's like the opposite of Uno. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, in fact, in magic, there's a certain type of deck called a mill deck because mm-hmm. that's what the effect is called. When you mill cards, you put them into your graveyard. Okay. So people will build mill decks and my friend Kyler loves these decks and I hate him for it because for me, that's not the fun way to play the game, but people will build decks around cards that make your opponent discard their cards so that they run out of cards faster. Okay. So for example, in this set, I found one card that was called, uh, I don't remember what the name of the card was, but the effect of it was like under certain conditions, your opponent would discard 13 cards, which out of a 60 to 100 card deck is kind of a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a solid amount. So, you know, uh, I don't like mill decks personally because again, like for me, the spirit of the game is like strategy and like pitting your cards against one another. It's not about like taking advantage of the rules and getting your opponent to discard their entire deck, but if people want to play that way, that's great. But most of these trading card games in professional tournaments have rules set for what the maximum number of cards one can have in a set is or what one can have in their deck is mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh for the lo- for a long time did not have such a rule that doesn't seem like it makes sense. Well, I mean, I suppose they didn't really have a reason to <laughs> until one day these jokers showed up to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament it was two guys wearing suits Uh huh. and they had stretched between their two shoulders, like a big fucking log. <laughs> and what that log was, was their 1000 card Yu-Gi-Oh deck. <laughs> I mean, yeah, which was at the time totally tournament legal. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems, it seems a little absurd that it took that long for someone to, to do something like that. Oh, I don't remember when this was, but it was, a, it was a long time ago. Well, I mean, even still, like, I would think that, like, the first day anyone played Yu-Gi-Oh, someone would have been like, I'm just going to get as many cards as I possibly can. Well, I, I, like, I guess no one thought of doing that, but it was apparently, like, uh, 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 uh it, apparently it was a lot, it was kind of an issue with, like, people doing this shit uh, where not necessarily where they brought like a thousand cards, but where they had really large decks um, to the point that matches would take forever. Cause they have all these, all these decks uh, 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 that, that just have like a thousand different cards that like keep them alive or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you know, after that, after that instance, there was a rule, <laughs> there was a rule put in place. So now, now there's a limit on, on how many cards you can have in your deck. Yes, there is. I'm trying to find this picture for you. Cause it's kind of hilarious. It, it it sounds yep, pretty here we funny. go this is them <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at these goofy motherfuckers oh my gosh they look like they're straight up out of like a gangster movie <laughs> yeah 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 they got like suits and tux or, or, or and, and fedoras on they they also look like they're like pallbearers carrying like a casket on their shoulders oh yeah definitely <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I actually got the wrong. I got I got the wrong number. It was a 2,222 card Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Nice. So after that, they imposed a deck limit. I, I, I'm assuming they ended up winning. I don't know. Th- that would be that would be really funny if they if they still didn't 
didn't end up winning. I can't imagine they did. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I can understand why Yu-Gi-Oh wouldn't have a rule like this if they didn't have the initial rule. But in Magic, at least, there's a limit to uh, the amount of a certain c- card that you can have in your deck, mm-hmm. which is four. You can only have four of each individual card in your deck. Okay. So, you know, you can't take like the most overpowered card in the game and make it your entire deck or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. You want to rate my friend Lauren's dad this week? Oh, absolutely. We, uh, we rated, uh, rated her mom, Deb, last week. So now we're going to rent, we're never going to rate Scott. And uh, let's, uh, let's see here. So here is, here's our boy, Scott. That's a good dad haircut. Yeah, that is a good dad haircut. Now let me let me move on to to another picture of, of Scott. Th- this gives you this gives you like the full the full picture. He he wears these custom cowboy boots literally everywhere he goes. It's a good look, along with his like Abercrombie and Fitch or Diesel jeans, and he refers to his Abercrombie jeans as his Fitches. <laughs> um one time we 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 were all together and afterward i was like lauren i was like what kind of jeans were your dad was your dad wearing i was like those were actually those are really cool yeah he's stylish and uh she asked him and he was like oh man were those my diesels or were they my fitches (laughs) um yeah always always has like like a necklace on usually like like some sort of like crucifix type thing um Sometimes he has like a pair of like Oakley sunglasses on like the back of his head. Nice. Classic um, look. But I've always said he looks just like um this actor uh Eric Estrada. I see he seemed familiar to me and I couldn't think of why, but now that you say that, I can absolutely see it. <laughs> now I know what he looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah good old good old eric estrada he really does yeah he's got the same cut yeah yeah for sure so that's uh that's our boy scott scott and deb nice but yeah scott scott is scott is a pretty stylish dude yeah no he's it's 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 a good look yeah i mean it's not a look that i would personally wear but (laughs) right it's not not for everyone can you imagine me in cowboy boots no (laughs) no unless they were red why red specific? I wear black all the time. It, no, it, it's just from uh, remember in how I met your mother. Ted insisted that he could pull off the red cowboy boots. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that's the only reason why I said that. Gotcha. But no, no, I can't. I can't legitimately picture you wearing cowboy boots of any color in any sort of serious form. Mm. Yeah, me neither. I, I got I got to have my high tops or it's nothing, bro. My extraordinarily worn out tie tops that are beyond the point of needing to be replaced. Yeah, I don't think I've seen you in anything other than a pair of chucks. I, that's all I like to wear. <laughs> I really I don't buy other shoes. I only have high tops. Yeah, even my work shoes, which are like n- a slip resistant, like not converse. They're styled after high tops. Yeah, but um, uh, 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 I was talking to this girl at work and she was wearing a pair of high tops and she was like talking about how they were kind of worn out and I kind of just like looked down at them and like they were they were a bit scuffed but they weren't nearly to the level of mine where like the sole is coming up the side is ripped open it's completely like charred black by dirt and shit like right uh, I, 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 I do not replace high tops until they are well beyond the point of no return. Well beyond. <sighs> Mac, I got to bring up a pet peeve. What's that? It, it's something that you apparently don't find to be a pet peeve because I just noticed it. I don't know what you're staring at. It, leaving time on the microwave. Like, like stopping the microwave before time expires. Oh, you know what? I that does bother me. Okay, it is a pet peeve of mine. Um, I didn't notice because I made popcorn last night. Gotcha. And you know, you just toss in the microwave and wait for it to like stop popping. Yeah. So I popped it open and grabbed it. And I didn't press stop to re- get rid of the rest of the time. Okay, fair enough. Because uh, I usually like your microwave is like right in my line of vision. Yeah. So I usually like keep an eye on that just so I have some idea how long we've been we've been talking. 
And I've looked at it like three times and I was like, it's not one thirty. And I was like, oh, it's fine. Maybe, maybe the clock's just, just off by an hour. Cause I got here. What about like two thirty or so? Yeah. Um, so I was like, maybe it's just off, but then the more I look at it, it just keeps staying at one thirty four. So let me take care of that. So it's not bothering you, bro. Okay. Thank you. Um, while you're doing that, I will, um, I'll tell you, uh, this isn't even really much of a story. Um, because I can only remember one specific instance, but, um, I've got these friends, Megan and Greg. I haven't talked about them yet. Um, God, I haven't seen them. It's been a long time, but it would never fail every time I would go, go hang out with them within like 30 seconds of walking in the door. Megan would say something embarrassing about her husband, Greg. (laughs) And it would be like, oh, this is Megan. Megan's catchphrase is, oh, my God, you guys. <laughs> so it was always the one I remember was, oh, my God, you guys, Greg, he bites his knuckle hairs. Ah, <laughs> uh. completely absurd. And I don't remember what any of the other ones were just totally unprompted. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. She would just throw him under the bus for like any random embarrassing thing that he would do immediately upon seeing them i i assume they they were things that happened recently like maybe earlier that day or something but yeah that's, just that sucks just i should divorce her oh ooh, i don't know if i'd go that far no i would uh, i would i don't want my my dirty laundry aired to my friends ah <sighs> yeah you know it happens what are you gonna do Sometimes that's just how it be. Die alone. I'm going to die alone. I can't put up with that shit. I just get a divorce. Yeah. You know, sometimes it happens. Um, yeah. The, oh, you know what? I, I got one. I actually, uh, my friend Mike brought this up and suggested that we talk about it because he listened to uh, the last episode um, where you we're teaching me about the internet, the Christery. Yes. The Christery. Well, he was like, man, you should talk to him about the old internet. And like what in particular? Okay. So I'll bring up a couple things, but this leads into like a whole other story. So, I mean, first of all, like you probably didn't have to deal with dial up. I did very briefly. Okay. It, well, it was definitely awful. Yeah. Um, cause it would tie up the phone line. Yep. And, um, you know, back in the day with, with dial up, it, it was, it was really slow, but you know, the big thing at the time was, was illegally downloading music off of Napster. Yeah. And it would take like hours to download like a song and then you get a virus or it'd be the wrong song entirely. Yeah. Or If you got kicked off the internet, you couldn't pick up the download later on. No, you had to start all over from the beginning. Yeah. We talked about this with the Canan episode. I don't know if you remember that or not. Um, I, I do remember that a little bit. I don't remember if we talked about the Napster thing. I, now that you bring it up, I do remember him talking about like possibly having like DSL or something like that. Yeah. Uh, my question is, do you, do you remember LimeWire? Oh Yeah. Yeah, LimeWire was was after Napster. Uh, did you know that <laughs> LimeWire had a premium service to avoid less viruses? <laughs> no, I didn't. And that ironically, uh, because LimeWire worked the way I did, you could download LimeWire Premium using LimeWire for free. <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> so it did. It wasn't like it, you didn't have like it wasn't like subscription based. You didn't need like a login. No, well, I mean that wasn't really a thing back in the day. Like you, you would you would pay to have the download, but right. then just people tossed the download up on LimeWire. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so absurd. Yeah, um, stole that from a Nakey Jakey video. Nakey Jakey. Yeah, he makes great videos. Um, uh, I'll have to send you the one about LimeWire and shit like that in particular because it's really fucking funny. But that's one thing he pointed out in that video that I was not aware of. Apparently, you could download LimeWire Premium on LimeWire, which is fucking hilarious. That is no that that's that's pretty fucking great. 
<laughs> and such such a such an of the times thing. Yeah, like God, I just love it that their 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 free service effectively eliminated the need to pay for their premium service. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. God, that's so fucking great. And I mean, it's not like you know. I mean, the people using the free service, well, I guess, and the paid service are already trying to dodge paying for things. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, exactly. Like, pirates gonna pirate, man. Yeah, like, hey, pirates, here's a premium service to pirate. Well, why don't I just pirate that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, God, that's fucking great. <laughs> no, I, I never knew that was a thing, but that's awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah, I know there were a couple other a couple other services like that. I think there was one called like Bear Share. That one doesn't sound familiar. Um, and I there there might have been another one. I I remember there were there were a couple because um they were all blocked in like the dorm rooms except for like every now and then a new one would come out and they they wouldn't block that because they didn't know about it yet. So you you could get away with downloading music for a little while until until the university caught on to it. Damn. Um, big rip but speaking about old internet did you ever use um aim or are you even familiar with it i mean it was around i wasn't using it at the time because i didn't have friends okay <laughs> you <All> know right. <laughs> i mean it, i mean like for one thing like the, the number of kids who had access to computers was much lower in the day than it was now right so right. like you know it was it was almost like a rare commodity that i even had a computer much less was conversing with people enough to need an IM. Yeah. Um, so God, this was probably around the time you were born. I would say like 2000, 2001, maybe, maybe 99, so, somewhere in that range. Um, uh, you know, that was like the big thing to do. You'd get home from school, you'd get on your computer, on your dial up and you'd talk on AIM, which was AOL instant messenger. Yeah. And you would just, you'd just chat it up with your, uh, all your friends. And, um, we, we would do that. Uh, my boy, Mike, him and I, and, uh, you know, some of our other friends would do this. And the other big thing that we would do, you know, cause cell phones weren't like everyday use. Um, people still use landlines for most of their calls. Yeah. And so, we would we would get together well not get together we would we would call each other and then you could do like three way calling and loop somebody else into your to your phone call and so we would do this and i think the reason he brought this up was to get me get me to to talk about um which i talk about a girl who i think was collectively both of our first girlfriends okay <laughs> so absurd um so uh if if i remember correctly um mike and i and probably our friend jason um we went out like bowling one night for like cosmic bowling because that was that was like the cool thing to do you know you got like the black lights with all the neon and uh you know there was like a they i think they had like a d like a an in-house dj who i think was just a kid who went to our high school sounds about right so this was our freshman year we'd have been like i don't know like 14 15 maybe something like that probably i think 14 um and uh so i don't know we were we were next to this group of girls having a birthday party and um the the this girl amy a lot of Amy's get involved in, in my stories, apparently. Yeah. I got a lot of Amy's in your life. Yeah. You know, it's a thing. Um, so whatever, I ended up talking to this girl and I think this is possibly like the only time in my entire life where I've actually been like, Hey, can I get your number? Because you know, whatever now it's like, whatever. Anyway. So I get this girl's number and we were like, boyfriend girlfriend in quotes for like i don't know like three weeks or a month or something like that she was from like the town next door and all of us would just get our parents to drop us off at like the bowling alley or the ice rink or the movie theater whatever but we we do this three-way calling between all of us because we all hung out all the time well she ended up she ended up dating 
me, Mike. Oh, I got another story. I, 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 I am disgusted, I, Mike. We'll I, talk about that in a second. Yeah, but I'm well, so grossed out I know, right now. I, know, I can't look at your hand. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, God, I'm so thrown off. Um, uh, our friend Jason, our friend Jeff. <laughs> Like there, there, there was uh, I, maybe our friend. Oh, I think she dated our uh, our boy Kevin, the one who who leaves his socks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could bring him back into this. <laughs> like go over to a place for the first time and find a, an all too familiar sock on the ground. I guarantee. I I absolutely guarantee you that he left his socks at her house at some point. Um. So she like just like cycled through all of us sometimes like multiple times like <laughs> like like she'd break up with one of us and then start dating like one of the other ones that we all hung out together with like every week. And Mike loves to bring this up and I'm glad he does because for the longest time I forgot about it, but she would make a list. Of all the guys that she was interested in. And there would be like a weekly ranking of how much she liked a particular guy. Okay. So we'd be like, oh man, we'd be like talking on AIM and be like, oh man, the, the list came out this week. <laughs> she would publish it. I mean, she would like, yeah, basically she'd be like, it, and Mike would be like, oh man, I'm up to number three this week. I'd be like, hell yeah, bro. Good job. <laughs> That's so I'm up, I'm up four spots to number two. Oh, hell yeah, dude. You're almost there. Yeah, it was it was super fucked up. That's so fucking weird. Um, and I don't I don't have any communication with her, but Mike is Facebook friends with her. Um, and last time Mike was in town, we um he like sent her like a like a Facebook message and he like talked to her for a minute about the list. And she claims she doesn't remember it, but she's just embarrassed oh yeah absolutely um now she's engaged to this guy who looks like he just hates his life and he's he looks completely dead inside she makes him post selfies on facebook like the two of them together like he probably like worked his ass off to get to the number one spot and he's just totally drained yeah <laughs> like he just has no energy left to, he he doesn't even have the will to live anymore he's just there um, but Michael take like screenshots and, and he'll like send them to me as snaps. Nice. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of that saga. So that, that was super absurd, but I thought you'd like that. Um, your fucking nail fell off. Yeah. Um, so we had talked, God, this would have been, it's been an ongoing. Thing. Yeah. It was like, I think it lasted about like, like about six weeks. Um, cause I think it was pretty early in July, early to mid July when, when I, I smashed the hell out of my finger. Um, but I was, this was last Wednesday at work. Um, I, um, I, I, I happened to notice that like, it felt a little weird and I looked and I, you're going to get really grossed out, but I nah, I'm just going to close my ears. You tell the viewers, but, um, I mean, imagine, imagine opening your laptop where it just kind of like, enough. I can hear through my hands. <laughs> yeah. It was just kind of like flipped up. And I was like, well, th clearly this is gone. Um, so when I was done at that particular account, went out to my car and just pulled it off. <laughs> oh, I'm, I am disgusted <laughs> but i mean you know it yeah it it looks gross um it actually i, it, I am actively avoiding looking in that general direction right yeah now. no i'm i'm intentionally looking at it myself to not show it to you um it is something i wanted to bring up today and kind of forgot about but you noticed it so i'll try and keep that uh, keep that bitch away from you Ah, uh, yeah I, I thought that was gonna happen I, I really wish it would have just happened in the beginning because by now it would probably be normal. It's I, I, I can't do like body shit like that. It's never going to be normal for me until it's just back to normal. Oh, I mean, I don't love it. I mean, I'm, I'm not like stoked about it. I just don't really have any other choice. It's just gone. No, but I, I, I just mean it's never going to normalize for me. This is this is a problem until it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it, it might be a while. 
Ugh, that's fucking disgusting. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really fucking gross. Ah, <sighs> yeah, but that's that's the that's the current state of. Uh, I'm sorry for anyone who had to hear that. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It is what it is. I, I was gonna describe it a different way, but this I I described it less in a less gross manner. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. I feel like our stories about shit are less gross than that. Yeah. Well, speaking of shit, have you ever seen the show Shit's Creek? No. Really, really funny show. I would highly suggest watching that. Um, initially, my dad got me into it. And uh, I don't know. That was probably like five, six months ago. Um, and we like blasted through almost a season in like a weekend that I was, I was going to visit him. Um, and I, I was visiting him again. And so we watched a bunch over the weekend and, uh, there's one episode where, where two characters that had previously hooked up with each other. Um, one suggested having a completely platonic sleepover and they, um, they did not hook up, but they ended up, sleeping in the same bed together mm, doesn't count right but it, it definitely does not count because it was out of necessity he couldn't he couldn't stay at his place so he needed a place to stay so i, I just thought it was funny that adults m- adults mentioning having a sleepover and calling it platonic like a platonic sleepover one of those one of those things that we covered but they had previously hooked up so that doesn't count I don't know if the previously would def- n- n- definitely alienate it, but yeah, I guess that's true. It's not impossible. It's just highly unlikely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be, that would be pretty hard. You know, you never know in more than one way. Oh, but um, bump. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of funny. I don't know if they're related. Um, and I can't, uh, I'm not going to say the name of it, but there's, um, I have an account that is, that has a specific name followed by the city that it, that you live in. And then there is another account in the next town over that has the same name. And then it's just like the street name. The one that's in the next town over somehow follows our podcast on Instagram. Really? Yeah. It's very strange. I don't know how that became a thing. Have they ever brought it up to you? No, because that account's not mine. I have oh. I have the one in your town. I but, see. But I would assume they're owned by the same people because they have the same name. Right. Okay. Um, but no, no. N- Never, never been brought up to me. That's so weird. I don't know how or why, but yeah, I looked at that and I was like, that's weird. And I even like looked at the account and yeah, it's for sure. Um, it's for sure in, in the town. It's, it's the account I thought it would be. Huh? It's not like just some random store with the same name. Cause it's, it's a fairly common name, but, um, also very, very early into our podcast, I had mentioned that we had a, a listener in Moscow and I, we, we just talked about it for like a second and it was like, well, that's weird. I don't know anybody in Moscow. Um, when I was looking uh, through through our followers and saw that 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 um, account followed us, um, I saw a dude who looked very Russian and I like checked out his his uh his account and sure enough looks like he lives in moscow and follows us so that's pretty awesome shout out to that dude yeah have, a, think- we have a vodka on us i almost said whiskey that would have been very offensive oh yeah no no they're they're big time whiskey whiskey bros over there let me let me see what his name is so we can give him an actual shout out vladimir i, I, I actually think it is <laughs> That'd be too perfect. Yeah, it, it it's something very it's like a very common Russian name. Um Putin. 
I, I, I might reach out to him and be like, hey, bro, we, uh, we talked about you coming up. Yeah, it's Vladimir. <laughs> yeah. What up, Vlad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like your cat, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Poggers cat moment. Yeah, Vlad and his cat. Um, yeah, all of his stuff is in, like, Russian, so I can't read any of it, but... Um, Brian and, says, Brick Room Nachos, good podcast. Okay. Well, he's going to stop listening now. <laughs> oh, come on. My, my Russian accent wasn't as bad as your German accent. Eh, fair enough. <laughs> In Soviet Russia, car drive you. See, now he might stop listening. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> we love you, Vladimir. Keep listening. Tell, tell your friends. Oh, God. Yeah. Tell your, tell your, tell your f- friends or I'm telling Putin on you. Yeah, and let us know what the name of your cat is. Probably Putin. <laughs> Putin. Putin yeah. the cat. Yeah. Why not? I'd, I'd be petting Putin. <laughs> Just pet your Putin. I like it. That's awesome. Uh, you're, do you, did, did, did the wide Putin memes make it to your circle of the internet? Um, possibly. It was a fucking, it was like a two week meme. It was so probably not, but it was super weird. It was literally like people took this like video of Vladimir Putin just walking down a hallway, Mm -hmm. but they like squished the shit out of it. He's like, so he's like super wide. Like, he looks like a child kind of walking around. Oh, you said wide. I thought you said why, like W H Y. No, like, wide. Gotcha. And it's and they said it's like this, like like very like some kind of like electronic music, and it's just literally like him like walking down the hall, and people just put weird captions onto it. The 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 format didn't last long because there's not a ton you can do with that. But it was it was an interesting meme. Hmm. It was an interesting just wide Putin. Huh. People latch on to weird things on the internet. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some have more staying power than others. Wide Putin apparently did not. It's, it all comes down to like how transformable the meme format is or how applicable it is to, you know, other situations that people could make memes out of. Like there's only so many things you can do with wide Putin. Yeah. <laughs> there's not really a ton of like, ways that can work itself into stuff yeah i uh i did like when god i don't know when this was like a year year and a half ago maybe whenever the uh like laughing joaquin phoenix joker was a thing and they would put like i think i think it was joaquin phoenix right y- yeah that is the joker i'm just trying to remember what the meme looked like it, it was just like it was like a scene with him laughing but they would put like other ridiculous laugh like spongebob laughing Oh, audio, yeah. audio right, right, right. synced up to the Joker laughing. So that was that was kind of a fun one for a little bit. But there's That's, only so many laughs that you're like, I know exactly what laugh that is just by hearing it. So, you know. I think that that's probably what kind of killed that one. That meme had a little staying power uh, because I, like there was two different ways they, they could use it. They could do what you what you said or like also, you know, that meme was good because it looked like he was laughing very forcefully okay, uh, in, in the yeah. scene. And so people would like caption it with like kind of fucked up stuff. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be like uh, like me and it's just the laughter. Yeah. But that was a really good movie. I didn't see it. I can't imagine you would have. Um, but it's it's not a superhero movie at all or like a super villain movie it is it was really a good movie <laughs> okay uh i watched it with sean um it's a very human story it's not like superhero shit at all like okay it's like an origin story joker you know isn't a super villain in terms of actually having superpowers uh he's just kind of a fucked up dude so like yeah. he, he can fit into human stories very well mm-hmm. but like there's there's no batman there's no absurd superhero shit it's just kind of a guy really down on his luck getting really fucked over by the world and kind of fighting back all right but it's it's really good and at the end of it you know i won't spoil the ending but the ending is kind of one of those ones where you're like did anything in this movie actually happen or yeah okay i gotcha i mean as much as i can without actually having seen it but right, I, right, I, right. I understand what you're what you're getting at yeah nice you seen any good movies lately um any good nah i've really just been watching uh 
I've been watching some TV recently. Um, oh, TV shows. Okay, Shit's Creek. Awesome. Been watching that. And uh, uh, the show Afterlife with uh, Ricky Gervais. I haven't heard of that one. Um, it's pretty good. It was like two six episode seasons or something like that. It's super short. Um, but there's a third one coming out. Um, but it kind of made me think about it like dude down on his luck. So ties in good show. Recommend watching it. It's like very dark, dark humor. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly the line, but he, um, I think it might be in the first episode. He's, uh, it takes place in, in the UK. And, uh, he, he's like walking by like a school playground and his nephew goes to that school and he says hi to his nephew. And then he's just like walking by and (laughs) there's this like little fat kid who like points at him and calls him, calls him a pedo. (laughs) And I don't remember the exact phrase, but he's like, he's like, I'm not, I'm not, not a fucking pedo. He's like, the kid just calls him a pedo again. And he's like, listen, even if I was a pedo, he's like, I wouldn't go for you. You fat little ginger cunt. And it's the kid just like stops. And then he just keeps walking. It's so funny. Fucking got him. Ha, got him. Oh yeah. What about you? Any good movies? Uh, I recently rewatched all except for the newest of the Evangelion movies. Not that you would know what those are. Never heard of it. Um, uh, Japanese, uh, movies. Uh, they, there was an anime way back in the day. Evangelion, uh, really, really popular. I've never seen it, but they, they started doing a movie series, which is a slightly altered version of the original plot, like way, way back in the day. Um, I want to say the first movie came out in like 2007. Mm-hmm. And then the next movie was like 2009 and then the next movie was like 2017. <laughs> yeah. And then the newest one just came out this year. Uh, Sean and I watched the first three together um, last winter and it came out while he was the newest movie came out while he was at school. So uh, uh, um, we haven't been able to watch that yet, but I wanted to kind of refresh my memory because they were really good movies. So I watched them. Um, the, I really like those movies because th- they're animated. Obviously they it's, it's, it's like a mech anime, like people in giant robots. Okay. Uh, and something that a lot of mech anime producers have gone to in recent years, you know, especially with like the Gundam series is like, they use 3d models for the mechs. Okay. Because you know, it's really difficult to maintain correct proportions when it comes to a mech, when you're drawing frame by fucking frame. Yeah, sure. And yeah, there's actually a lot of memes based on like the first Gundam anime of just like these horribly distorted Gundam that just didn't get drawn correctly. <laughs> okay. In like a, in like a quick single frame or like far off into a shot. But, um, yeah. So these days, a lot of them use, uh, 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 uh 3d animated models, but you know, it's pretty obvious when you insert a 3d animated model into a 2d scene or into a 2d film. Okay. So what a lot of studios failed to do that these movies did really well is finding a really good balance between that 2d and 3d. Like they really only use the 3d models when they're moving a lot and you wouldn't really have time to notice or care when it's like a stagnant shot or if they're only doing a little bit of movement in a shot, like especially like if, if, if you're, perspective on the mech is going to be the same throughout the entire shop shot. They'll 2d animate it. Okay. Just because it looks better. Um, generally speaking, I'll, I'll put in general terms. It usually looks better. Yeah. And then as soon as it's a shot where it's like sweeping around the mech, or like I said, they're moving really fast 3d model because again, it's moving so fast. You're not going to notice. And it saves the animators a ton of work and time because yeah, trying to like animate a camera pan around a mechanical object, like trying to understand how each individual like panel on the fucking thing moves. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to do. Right. So yeah, um, it's really cool to see when uh, studios manage to get it done right and well, but obviously it leads to very long production times. Yeah. But I think the results speak for themselves. It looks incredible. So it's worth it. Nice. Nice. That's I, I, I I'm somewhat interested in doing a, a, a video on that kind of thing. Because there's a lot of uh, anime that have tried to use 3D 
Uh, it's been more prevalent as the years have gone on by. You know, like in, in America, we basically fucking completely gone to 3D models. Like there's so few 2D animated movies or shows coming out anymore. Yeah. Or if it is a 2D animated show, it's like those super like stilted marionette models that don't actually change shape as you're like animating yeah. them like fucking family guy looks lazy as shit. Um, but then, you know, the, the downside is you'd lose that to the animation, which can be really special. Yeah. So, um, what they do differently in Japan is they've retained their 2d animation They're What they're trying to do is basically the opposite. They're trying to like find ways to make 3d animate animation work the same way that 2d animation would. Okay. Um, so like one big thing they've done in recent years is, uh, you know, perspective is obviously huge when it comes to animation and it's different. It's difficult to get the right proportions when it comes to using 3d models versus just drawing it 2d. Uh, there's a video game called Dragon Ball Fighters. It's a fighting game based on the Dragon Ball characters. Okay. The game uses 3D models, but they fucked with it a lot to make it seem like they're 2D models. And it looks incredible. Um, and basically, like, how they do this kind of thing. So, like, say there's... Say you, you win in a match. Your character gets, like, a little, like, oh, I won animation. Yeah. So, you know, say the main character, Goku, what he'll do is he'll, like, be standing there and he'll, like, punch towards the screen. Mm -hmm. When you do that with a 3D model, the way the camera operates in that kind of space, like, the fist doesn't grow as large as it should for how it should look in 2D animation. Okay. Uh, compared to where the camera is like sure it's, the, the the fist kind of stays small whereas what they want is for the fist to basically cover up the entire screen okay so what they do is is i, I forget what it's called i think it's called force perspective um what they will do and uh you can find like like files that they put out showing how this works what they will do is they will take the 3d model's arm mm -hmm. and they will just fucking stretch it like crazy <laughs> Until the arm <laughs> until the arm is like 40 feet away from the, the character model and like it's that big on the camera the way it should be nice. The downside of that, of course, is that, you know, you can only have it from one perspective because if you show it from the side, he has this ridiculously long arm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, they've been doing a lot of stuff like that where they try to find ways to make 3D animation be capable of the same things as 2D animation rather than just switching to 3D animation and doing what it's capable of. Yeah, which I think is really cool. But um that kind of thing is time consuming and costly and not every studio has that kind of time or money. And, uh, when you don't, you end up with something like the 2016 animated, uh, adaptation of berserk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people who watch anime know exactly what I'm talking about. This, this anime is, is, is universally hated for how absolutely poorly it was animated. The, the entire thing was animated in 3d, but it just looks fucking good garbage like oh. <laughs> you can tell they were just out of time there's this one incredibly infamous shot where like the main character guts they wanted to show him like walking from like the middle of the screen kind of like off camera so you know you'd expect like a walking animation where like maybe his arms are swinging a little bit like you can see his torso moving it's, yeah like, moving up and down a bit it legitimately looked legitimately looked like they just took their the, the 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 mouse and just moved him up and down as he walked off screen. Oh no, come on. It looks fucking awful. Oh, that sucks. And it's like someone put a lot of time into this anime because there are scenes that look good, but there's a lot more that look fucking terrible. Oh man. So um and, you know, I mentioned this in my Berserk video, like Berserk is like known for having incredible art. So that anime is absolutely hated because it's such a butchering of one of the most incredibly well drawn mangas in existence. Yeah. But um, so, you know, it, it, I think at this stage of where 3D animation is at, there are right and wrong times to use it. If you're going to try to do kind of a 2D, 3D hybrid mm -hmm. and there's people who do it really right. And there's people who do it like Berserk 2016. So, you know, it, I think it'd be interesting to make a video talking about like where it works, where it doesn't and why. Yeah. Um, and like there's this movie Premiere that I like a lot. Uh, Promare uses a 2D, 3D hybrid system and it works really fucking well. And like one of the big things they do is like if they're using 3D models, the camera does not stop moving. Even if it's like something as slight as like panning across the scene, the, 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 it, it does not stop moving mm -hmm. because it doesn't want you to acknowledge the fact that there's, there's 3d models and like they use it to their advantage as much as possible. There are these, there are these incredible action scenes 
where you're watching it and it's like if there is a cut in this entire scene it's completely hidden from my view like it looks like it's all one long take where the camera is just flipping around like crazy following the action uh-huh. and it looks fucking incredible yeah and like that kind of thing would only work with 3d models which is why it's the perfect time to use 3d models but they made sure to do it in a way where as soon as everything stops moving it switches back to 2d immediately bar none okay nice so it's a really interesting subject. I might want to explore that at some point, but I'm also not an animator or an artist, so it's really hard for me to talk about it in an intelligent way. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. But um, one thing that I, I, I need to bring up before uh, before I forget, this was like one of the main things I wanted to at least mention because um, it kind of rounds out a topic that we've brought up two or three times. Um, Got to give a huge congratulations to the Little Leaguers from taylor michigan because taylor north won the little league world series oh damn pog yeah they won it over the weekend and they get like a parade this week um when they get back and um the best part is the team they beat was from ohio fucking got them so yeah hashtag fuck ohio suck it you you backwoods inbred assholes have a good day thanks for listening to the podcast (laughs)